This week, we'll demystify frame rate and frame size for your DSLR video camera. Adorama TV presents DSLR Video Skills, where you'll learn all about photography and videography. Here's your host, Rich Harrington. Hi, my name's Rich Harrington, here for DSLR Video Skills, brought to you by Adorama. And today, I want to talk about a decision point that you're going to need to make. That is, what frame size and what frame rate to shoot at. And a lot of folks just sort of get overwhelmed by the menu. Here's the deal. Sometimes the decision is going to be made for you. All you got to do is ask the client and say, what do you want? Chances are the person hiring you has a project in mind. And they're going to have specific frame size and frame rate they need. However, if the choice is up to you, it's pretty simple. Let's start with the first one, which is frame size. Typically, you've got three choices, except one of them is garbage. You're not going to shoot standard definition. Nobody needs standard definition 4x3 video anymore, and if they do, I'd like you to please take them all the VHS tape stock I have left over and maybe a Betamax machine. Chances are people need 16x9, and to do this, you're going to be shooting HD. Now we got two sizes, 1080p, which is 1920x1080, often called full HD, and 720p, 1280x720. Now, depending upon the manufacturer of your camera, you may have one, you may have both, and you may not even have all the frame rates with each size. So oftentimes, the frame rate is going to be determined by the frame size or vice versa. If you're a photographer who's used to having the ability to crop, you really don't have this when it comes to shooting video. You don't want to blow the image up. So really, the alternative, if you need a cropping workflow, maybe you're just getting started and you're not always 100% rock solid with your composition, shoot 1080, edit 720, and you're going to have a little bit of flexibility there to adjust the scaling or the composition in post-production to cover up for the bad framing. All right, the next biggest thing is going to be frame rate. And there's typically four choices, 60p, 30p, 25p, and 24. Now, you might be wondering, where do these numbers come from? How do we come up with these? Well, it's pretty simple. Typically, in the United States, if you're doing broadcast content, you're going to be shooting 30. Now, in a real broadcast workflow, this is 29.97. We've got fractional frame rates. It's tied to crazy things like the frequency of the electricity going through the wires, making black and white televisions sync back in 1950. So you really don't have to worry about it. Just 30 if you're doing the broadcast workflow. Your camera, as long as the firmware is up to date, will shoot at the correct setting, but the menu is just going to call it 30. If you're overseas, you're doing a PAL workflow. That's typically going to be 25. One of the most popular frame rates is 24p, just like feature film. The benefit of 24p is that it gives you a very filmic image. Type of motion, looks supernatural. You're going to see this used a lot. And the great thing with 24p workflow, looks perfect on the web. Downloads 20% faster. 20% less rendering time in your nonlinear editing system. 20% less storage on your memory card. 24p is really advantageous because it's smaller files, looks great. Play it on an iPad, play it on the web, play it on a Blu-ray disc, play it on a television set. It's going to work. And we've been converting 24p video to 25 and 29.7 for years. Think of all those films you've seen on television that have been converted. Works just fine. So that leaves 60. What the heck is 60 for? Well, 60 frames per second is typically used for specialty shots like slow motion. And we're actually going to explore that on an episode coming up shortly where we're going to show you how to use this for special effects. The only reason to shoot 60p is if you want to overcrank the camera to get in camera slow motion. So we'll explore that more in a future episode here on Adorama TV, but it's pretty cool stuff. So getting this stuff, easy. Remember, every camera is different. So look at your menu, look at the settings. If you know that you have to always deliver a particular frame size and frame rate, make sure the camera actually shoot that. So before you rent or before you buy, dig into those specs. So depending on your camera, the settings will be a little bit different, but essentially you're going to want to go in and find the video menu. Now this is going to be in different places on different cameras, so check your menus. In this case, on a Nikon, it's under movie settings. And once I choose that, then I get all my settings. For the Nikon, the frame size and the frame rate settings appear together. It's similar on a Canon. The big thing to realize is that different cameras will have different configurations. Notice in this case, I could choose 1080p 
and I could choose from 30, 25, and 24. Because the 720 size is a smaller frame size and the camera can keep up more, it can actually pass off 60 or 50 frames per second, which is pretty uncommon. Rarely will you use 50, but if you want to do a slow motion effect specifically for PAL, that's exactly double the frame rate that you would use for PAL delivery. And you see they're all in there. And this particular camera doesn't even offer the ability to shoot standard definition. But you will find it on lots of other cameras still. I just recommend avoiding it. The next choice you may have to choose is the quality method. Whatever the highest quality is, whether it be labeled high or best, always choose it. The video cards are going to smash the footage anyways, highly compressed. So make sure you go with the maximum image quality. And then choose your destination. You may have an SD card slot or a CF slot. You could target that. It'll tell you how much storage space you have. I want you to notice here as I change the frame size, for example, I have an hour and 10 minutes on this card. If I go up here and change the frame rate and the frame size down to 720, notice that we have two hours of footage. So there's a big play of choosing the frame size and the frame rate because it will affect how much total storage and record time you have. So balance out those factors in consideration. Don't arbitrarily change a frame rate if you've got something the client's expecting, but you might find yourself needing to squeeze more footage when you're out in the field and decide perhaps to shoot at the frame size that'll maximize your record time. The good news is, is that both 1080 and 720 are typically perfectly acceptable for most delivery formats. So just find the size you want, get the frame rate you need, and keep shooting. For Autorama TV, my name's Rich Harrington. Thanks for checking out this episode of DSLR Video Skills. Hope you feel more confident choosing the right frame rate for your production. Adorama TV is brought to you by Adorama, your best source for the equipment and knowledge you need. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. Place your order by 7 p.m. and it ships the same day. Plus, the next time you're in New York City, be sure to visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. Check out the Adorama Rental Company for professional cameras, lighting, computers, and more. We'll help you make the best selection to match your needs while giving you the knowledge to achieve the best outcome from your rental. Adorama is your complete solution for equipment, printing, training, and more. Adorama, more than a camera store.